Hey guys, so I've got my uh, friend Chessai uh, on Google Meet here, and uh, we uh, we're gonna implement data log in uh, Haskell. Uh, I mean, we're all we've already got some stuff done, and I'm gonna explain that. Uh, we're basically going off of this PhD thesis, context-sensitive pointer analysis using binary decision diagrams. Um, and uh, Chess, I will be in the chat monitoring it for uh, anyone asking questions because I don't have two monitors to look at. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to wait a little bit for... Uh, some more people to stream in. I see there's four people already, but uh, yeah. I don't know if that number four is correct. Um, I think I'm uh, just going to wait a few more minutes, though. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll, uh, I'll just start with the basics. So uh, we're dealing with the language called datalog. And datalog is uh, kind of a database query language. Um, and what queries look like is they kind of look like prolog rules, uh, if you're familiar with that. Um, so you have a, a head, which is like, you know, some, you have a, a name of a thing called a relation here. So this is a relation, uh, and these are variables. Um, and then you have this funny operator thing, and then you have another relation uh, a bunch, potentially a bunch of them, comma separated, um, and you finally end each line with a period. And uh, what this basically means is that uh, if you if you're familiar with SQL, so this is kind of like we have three tables called foo, bar, and baz, and uh, the foo table has two columns. Uh, we know that because we have two variables here. Uh, and same with bar and baz, they both have two columns. And what this is saying is that we should essentially take every uh, row of bar, and uh, if the second element of that, uh, of that row is equal to the first element of a row in baz, then uh, we should we should add that those two elements to foo. Um, so just as an example, if uh, well let, let's make this slightly better. I'm gonna change it to z here. Uh, so let's say foo contains you know, or sorry, we're we're defining foo. So let's say bar contains uh, you know a and b and uh, b. And then Baz contains B, C, and D, E. Then Foo will contain um, A, C. I'm back. Welcome back, Chessa. Um, I don't know if we lost that guy. But it's okay. Uh, so that's uh, if you're and if you're familiar with uh, with like SQL, uh, what this is effectively doing is it's doing a join on these two tables. Uh, this rule. Uh, so a uh, I'm gonna turn down chest size volume a little bit. Um, So, I'm muted. Okay. Uh, 
so what was I going to say? Uh, so there can be potentially be a bunch of these uh, rules, and uh, they can be recursive. So you can you can have a situation like this, um, and, and this is actually where dialog starts to diverge from SQL. So um, there's like a classic example that uh, I don't want to screw up, so I'm going to pull it up because it's on the Wikipedia page. Um, yeah, here it is. So let's say you have some table that's like uh, that's called parent, and uh, this table contains like two. It contains two uh, columns, and in each row, uh, the tuple contains you know two two people, uh, and it, it'll only contain those people if one is the parent of the other. Um, so you know it, it might contain like Homer, uh, Lisa, and like Homer, Bart. Uh, so then you can define a table that contains that that ex expresses the ancestorship relation with a pair of rules like this. And you'll you'll notice that this rule in particular is recursive. Um, so that's that's the main difference in expressiveness between data log and uh, and SQL. Uh, I believe in SQL 1999 you can have something kind of like this, like a recursive query, but I think it's not quite as powerful. Uh, so I'm in particular very interested in data log because it seems to be a uh, a very good way of doing certain kinds of static analyses of programs. So the basic methodology is that uh, if you have a control flow graph for a program, so uh, control flow graph just looks like um, a bunch of nodes, and each of these nodes contains like lines of code in it, and the arrows indicate, you know. Like this thing is a loop, basically. Uh, so in, in a compiler, you, you often take the front end and turn it into some kind of control flow graph. Uh, and if you can express this control flow graph in data log, you know, for example, by saying like uh, you have some relation that's like successor of you know node one, node two. Uh, so this is the syntax for just like adding something to a table. So this is adding uh, a row to the successor table. Uh, so you, you could have a bunch of these like successorship relations. And then you could also have like, you know, node one writes to the variable uh, a. You, you could also have a relation like that. Um, and if you put enough of these relations in, it's actually very easy to program static analyses based on uh, these relations. Um, I'm not a huge category theory expert, uh, Meldar, but uh, you know, I, uh, I know I know some stuff. Um, anyway, uh, so that's that's in particular why I'm interested in this. Now, uh, how does what I'm working on differ from other data log implementations? Because they do exist. Um, well, number one, it's going to be an in-memory data log implementation, uh, and it's, it's not going to be a server or anything. So it's just going to be a library that you call into, uh, and I think that'll make it really lightweight and easy to use. Um, at least if you're writing Haskell. Uh, if you're writing in some other language, you there will have to be some kind of server. Uh, and then uh, another aspect is that I'm using binary decision diagrams. Uh, and in fact, I'm, I'm largely basing this work on uh, this PhD thesis here called context-sensitive pointer analysis using binary decision diagrams. Uh, and what these binary decision diagrams are is they're a very compact way to represent uh, a relation. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't really have the context for that, Maldar. That's a question that I could probably explain in context, but I I don't I need more. Um. Anyway, the uh, yeah, so these binary decision diagrams are very efficient data structure for representing relations, uh, and in fact, all of the ah, that's the timer that I set. Um, all of the operations that are fundamentally done in a uh, data log rule can be converted to binary decision diagram uh, operations. So uh, let me now actually go into the code. I uh, just want to check, can you guys easily read this? I mean, I guess I can look at the stream myself and it seems pretty readable. Um, so if we go to, uh, and b by the way, this is all on uh, github.com slash chessi slash uh, hs data log. So yeah, it's, it's readable. Chad is saying it's readable too. Cool. Um, so uh, let's, uh, let's, let's dive into the code a little bit. So I'm going to reorganize things a little bit. Uh, Oh, one other thing. So one other thing, one other feature of datalog, pretty much the last feature, is called negation. So let's say I have some relation that looks like equals of x, x, period. So what this means is this relation essentially contains a row for every single value of uh, whatever the type of x is. Uh, and later on, you'll see that we'll have like type annotations. So we'll have like, you know, Int, int. We'll have like, you know, or something like that. Uh, and and Prindle says, "Hi, Taktoa. Chess has told me a lot about you." Hey. Um. So, uh, you know, we'll we'll have uh, we'll have type annotations, and and hey, Nick. Um. The. Uh, Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, so this this relation represents uh, ha has one row for every uh, pair of ints that are the same. And th a feature of datalog is that we can create kind of negated uh, relations. So I could have something like not equals, and the way it's defined is I negate equals. So this contains a row for every pair of ints that are not equal. Um, and uh, so that's very useful. Um, so in our, uh, in our actual da data types, uh, what does this look like? Well, a uh, data log program is a list of declarations, uh, which are these things that end in period. Uh, and then also there is a, a bunch of type signatures. Uh, so, you know, th that was that thing I was showing before where it's like ancestor colon relation of int int. Um, and uh, that those get loaded into this map from rel to type. So uh, if you're curious what all this rel and var stuff is about, uh, I. In my experience, whenever you have a name for something in a uh, some kind of syntax in, in Haskell, it really pays off to be polymorphic in that name. So uh, pretty much everywhere, we are polymorphic in the names of relations. So these this ancestor thing is an example of that. Uh, and the names of variables, which are you know, x and y here. So. We've got this list of declarations, and what is a declaration? Well, currently the only kind of declaration we have is a rule, uh, and the left-hand side of a rule is a relation, uh, 
and the right hand side is a list of expressions. And the only difference between a relation and an expression is that a an expression allows you to have negation. So, you know, uh, and if you see here, an expression is exactly a pair of a relation and a negated, which is just basically a, a Boolean. Um, so, uh, and by the way, we call this thing on the left-hand side of the uh, colon hyphen, uh, we call that the head relation. Uh, and this list of experts here, we call that the sub-goals. Okay, so what is a relation exactly? Well, uh, there's this bit to the left of the parentheses, and that's uh, just a rel. Uh, and then we have the bit inside the parentheses, which is a list. Uh, and originally this was a list of var, but it turns out that you can actually do stuff like, you know, foo. And so you have like a literal here of some kind, a constant. Uh, and so we have either constant var. Um, and then uh, our constant type, well, currently we just have ints and bools and bit strings, which are a list of bools. Uh, and for the most part, uh, our name type is this, is this right here. So it's either a parse name, uh, which is a maybe string, or an elaboration name, which is maybe var, and a var is just an int. Um, so the point of this elaboration name is that sometimes during uh, compilation, we want to generate a fresh name that's used nowhere in the program. And by having these two different constructors, we kind of namespace things so that uh, you know we, we can never mix up uh, a variable that we've synthesized with a variable that came from the actual program. So parse name, you know, it, it's a it's just a string that actually comes from the program. Now, what are these maybes about? Well, what if you have something like this? Uh, so let's say you do foo of x y, and then um, you know bar of x. Well, in that case, this y is unused. So it kind of might as well not have a name. And in fact, in, in a lot of data log implementations, you can just write an underscore here. Uh, and we're gonna have some machinery later on that's gonna automatically convert these to underscores because it's gonna turn out to be rather important that we do that. Um, so uh, so these two maybes are, uh, the, the nothing case of that maybe is to express this underscore. OK, so uh, that's the basics. Uh, and of course, we also have types, which are either ints, bools, uh, bit strings, uh, and then relations, which are you know, take a list of types. And you shouldn't actually be able to nest them, but you can currently. Um, we might in the future add more complicated data types to that. Uh, it seems quite possible. So uh, once we do parsing, the next step is what we call elaboration. Uh, and the goal of elaboration is to convert this data log to a thing called relational algebra. Um, so if I go here, I can show you those types. Uh, so the operations in relational algebra are, uh, well, firstly, we can take a relation and we can invert it. Uh, so we, that's something very easily expressed in a binary decision diagram. Uh, I'm going to skip over this const one because we don't use it yet. Uh, the next one is we can do a join. So uh, if you've ever written SQL, then you might be familiar with what a join is. Uh, what this is specifically is it's a natural join. Uh, you shouldn't be com confused by this natural here. That's just an int. Um, it's a positive int. Uh, but it's a, it's a natural join. And what we're saying is we're going to join together these two relations. Uh, and so what is this int doing here? Um, well, when you do a natural join, you have to join on 
Uh, so let, let me give some background. A natural join is kind of like composition of relations, if you've ever heard of that. Um, what we essentially do is we have two tables, and we take the columns that have the same name, and we kind of match them together. Uh, so I'm trying to think of a good way to explain this. It's like we treat this whole thing as like a function from name and emp ID to depth name. And then we treat this one as a function from depth name to manager. And then we uh, kind of compose them together. So if you see in this case, we've got Harry 3415 finance yields George um, and so on. Uh, and uh, you can't see it in this example, but you might have more than one column that has the same name in between these. Like, what if instead of emp ID it was manager here? Uh, and natural join still kind of makes sense in that case. Um, well, okay, in that case it doesn't quite make sense, but it, like if this had three columns and this one was manager, then that would make sense. Uh, I hope this is readable. I think it is. It's uh, it's readable to me. Okay, so uh, and and if none of the column names are the same between the two uh, tables, then it's just a Cartesian product. Uh, if you're familiar with that, so. So we can do joins, uh, and what this natural means. So, in our, in, in the thing I was just looking at, uh, we've got these column names like name, emp ID, depth name. But in our relational algebra implementation, we're not going to have those. Instead, um, we're just going to have kind of tuples without named fields. Uh, and what this natural is going to represent is the amount of kind of overlap between the two things. So in this case, we want to merge depth name here. And depth name happens to be the last one of this and the first one of this. So what we would do is we would do a join with this natural number being equal to 1. Um, and it's always going to join the last n things of this table and the first n things of this table. Uh, and if we want to do a join where, uh, you know, maybe we want to join name with depth name or something like that, uh, well, we can do a rename, uh, and I'll explain that later. So uh, the next operation is union. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. If you imagine imagine having two tables that have the same column names, what union does is it just concatenates them. So, you know, if I had one that had this Harry and Sally, and I had another table that had George, Harriet, and Mary, then union would look like this. Project is uh, also a fairly simple operation. So you'll notice it takes a list of adder here. And adder is int. So adder is basically the data type of these column names. And uh, what does this list of adder mean? Well, it means that we are going to delete all uh, columns whose position is not equal to those, uh, those numbers. So like, for example, if I had a table that was like, you know, foo of a, B, C, and D, uh, and you know maybe I have like a bunch more rows uh, in this thing. If I were to project on, you know, one, two, and or sorry, zero, one, and three, then what that would mean is I have a relation that looks like foo of A b and d uh, so i'm just uh, project allows us to essentially delete columns uh, 
Okay, rename. So rename is uh, quite similar. It just allows us to reorder the columns. So, uh, you know, if I did a rename with, uh, and so rename takes a permutation, um, which is basically just a list of ints. Uh, and let's say that list of ints was, um, sorry, it's a list of ints where each int is uh, less than the length of the overall list. Uh, so it's kind of like a list of indexes into itself. Uh, so an example is 0, 2, 1. So what that permutation means is that we're going to take something like A, B, C, and we're going to map it to um, A, C, B, I think. Yeah, that, that looks correct to me. Um, so uh, yeah, that's what this rename operator does. Uh, difference is also fairly straightforward. So let's say I have, you know, foo has, so I'm just going to do a1 and a2 here. And then uh, I've got, let's say I have var uh, just contains a1. Uh, then foo minus var would, let's say that equals baz. Well, then baz would look like this. So uh, it just removes all of the things from uh, that are in the second relation from the first relation. Looks like we do still have some viewers. Uh, okay, difference. And then uh, the final one is select. So um, select allows us to uh, take a, um, a certain column of the uh, of a relation and filter out the set of tuples in that relation to only include ones where that col the value in that column equals a certain value. So um, if I were to do something like, so let's say I had um, this. Uh, and then let's do three, four, and five. So if I did that, then select of foo zero, or sorry, foo one x would, uh, let's say baz or bar equals that. Well, then bar would look like this. So bar would contain these tuples. So uh, that's what this rel algebra type means. Um, I guess I didn't really go into const. So const is just something that creates a relation with only one row in it. Uh, and the list of constants here is that row. Uh, so you know, if I had like const of you know, A, B, C, so like bar equals const of A, B, C, well then that's just the same as like, if I were to write in data log, uh, bar of A, B, C. Okay, so we have this rel algebra type, uh, but we actually uh, have more that we want to do with this. So uh, in compiler theory, there's a thing called a three address code, which is, uh, so a good example is, let's say we have some complicated expression like x equals, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is the quadratic equation, right? What a three address code is, is it's a way of kind of factoring this into many uh, variable assignments where each variable assignment only does exactly one operation. Um, so yeah, that that's what it is. Uh, and that's kind of what we're going to use for our relational algebra stuff. So we have a TAC, or three address code, which uh, has a rel. And the rel is like is kind of like the left-hand side of one of these colon equals things. So it's this T1 here. 
uh, and then the right hand side is, is a rel algebra, uh, which I've just described. And then uh, we have a statement, uh, and I'm going to not go in order. So firstly, we have assignments, which are uh, just these tack things. Um, we could have inlined this tack type into assignment, but I think uh, I think it might be useful to have it on its own. So, but it, it, I'm not sure yet. I might make that change later. Uh, so a statement can be an assignment, but it can also be a bunch of assignments uh, in, that get executed in order, which is called a block. Uh, or finally, it can be a while loop. Uh, and this isn't like a normal while loop that you would see in like the C programming language or something. Uh, instead, we have a list of relations here for the like condition of the while loop. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we're going to execute the body of this while loop until all of these relations uh, reach their fixed point. So what I mean by that is if I execute the statement and none of those relations change, then we know that there's no use in executing the statement again because it, it will still not change. So uh, that's kind of the termination condition is when we reach a point where executing the statement Okay, so um, did I finish explaining the while loop thing? I'll just go through it again. Uh, the point of this is that we execute the statement in the body of the while until all of the uh, relations referenced in the condition of the while uh, no longer change after each execution. Um, so just to look at actual implementation, what we do is, uh, so in this reference interpreter, we have some state that is a map from rel to table. And uh, table is whatever, who cares what it is. Uh, the t table is some data type that represents you know, the, the state of a table. Uh, and uh, so what we do is we look up in this map uh, all of those relations that were in this list here. Uh, for the before, and then we run the statement, uh, and then we look up, look them up again uh, after, and then if before is not equal to after, then we run the reference interpreter on while of rel's statement. Um, so that's what uh, I don't know what I changed. Just gonna revert. Okay. Uh, so the overall uh, structure of this program is that we are taking um, we're taking in uh, a program uh, from our syntax, if you recall, uh, and then we're gonna do some pre-processing to it. Uh, so, for example, we're gonna check that all the types are used correctly. Uh, and we're actually going to you know, sim synthesize this map of types. Um, and then we're going to do elaboration, which is where we convert the program into a, uh, a statement. Uh, and maybe, maybe statement is not a great name for it, because you know, there can be multiple assignments in a statement. So really, this statement is more like a whole relational algebra program. Uh, and then uh, we're going to do some, uh, once we have the statement, we're going to do some uh, analyses to it to optimize it. Uh, and then we are going to interpret it using uh, binary decision diagrams. Uh, so if you recall, in uh, I think it was in rel algebra, I had this reference interpreter, and we just have this like really stupid table type, which is just a set of tuples, and a tuple is a list of constants. Well, you know, you can do this, but it's going to be very, very inefficient. Uh, what we're essentially going to do is replace this table type by a binary decision diagram. Now, what is a binary decision diagram? Uh, 
think a good illustration is here. So it's really just a bunch of nodes, each of, each of which has two children. Uh, and the point of the two children is that they represent, so each node represents a variable, uh, and each uh, edge coming out of that node represents what to do if it's true and what to do if it's false. So, you know, we, we start off with x1 here, we check if it's true, if it is, then uh, we check if x2 is true, and if it is, then we output 1. Uh, if it's false, then we output 0, etc. Uh, and so this is a very compact way to represent a function from, uh, in this case, 3 bits to 1 bit. Um, and in general, it's a uh, very compact way to represent a function from n bits to 1 bit. Uh, and what is a function from n bits to 1 bit? Well, it's really a set of uh, bit strings of length n. Uh, so, yeah. And, and, you know, a set is exactly what we want here. Um, now, you do have to take these tuples and encode them as bit strings, but that is fairly easy. Uh, and the real advantage of these binary decision diagrams is that they natively support a lot of these operations in our rel algebra type. Um, so not, for example, is a very easy one. Uh, and, uh, you know, join also has an implementation union. A lot of, a lot of them do. Um, so... Uh, let me reorganize my windows. Let me just check if anyone is uh, has any. You questions. gonna talk about code? Oh yeah. So um, this is a uh, this is our the wrapper that we wrote over this binary decision diagram called CUD, uh, and uh, we humorously refer to it as CUD because you know it sounds like the stuff that cows chew. Uh, and of course, the function the function that uh, that we use to process something in the CUD monad is called chew, uh, <laughs> and uh, what is this CUD thing? Well, it's really just a reader monad uh, over this DD manager type, uh, and you don't really need to concern yourself with what that means. Uh, all all you have to know is that CUD T is a place where we can do things with binary decision diagrams. So, you know, if I, so a binary decision diagram is basically this DD node type. And, uh, you know, I can, I can do things to combine them together. Like, you know, I can, I can do nor, or I can invert it with a not, or I can do or, and there's just many different operations. And we, we probably won't even use all of these. So uh, now I'm going to go through the process to convert a uh, program into uh, relational algebra. So uh, I'm going to skip this part. I'm actually going to jump into the thesis because I think there's a pretty lucid explanation. Uh, and if you want to check out the thesis, it is in chat here. Uh, so we have to do a bunch of transformations, but um, some of the basic ones are. So let me just uh, open up my scratch buffer again. So for each sub goal with an underscore, project away its unused attributes. Well, what that means is Let's say we have a rule that looks like foo of x, y, uh, and then we've got like bar of x, z. Um, and by the way, when you use a variable on the right-hand side here that isn't on the left-hand side, what that's basically saying is it tries to find a z such that this is true. Um, or it, it basically just means this element is unrestricted. Uh, it, it can be any element of bar 
as long as this first element matches, uh, or sorry, I'm, I'm getting it backwards. Uh, what this will do is it will essentially find, it will, it will only consider the first column of bar. Um, so in fact, we can replace this with an underscore uh, to make that really apparent. So uh, what does this mean for each subgoal with an underscore project way it's unused attributes? Well, what it means is we're going to transform this to look like foo of x, y and is entailed by a bar prime of x. And what is bar prime? Well, bar prime uh, is going to be a project of zero bar. Uh, and so this line is is essentially going to be emitted as part of our statement output. And this is going to be further processed. Uh, so the general structure is that we are going to take a declaration and we are going to produce a a bunch of sub goals that may be modified. So in this case, we modified the sub goals to be bar prime instead of bar here. Uh, and we changed the number of things it's applied to. Uh, and we're going to emit at the same time using this writer T monad, uh, a list of statement rel. So uh, yeah, uh, so one so let's go to the actual code that implements step number one here. I guess I should probably zoom into this so it's easier to read. Um, so That's pro better. So project unused. Uh, well, what is this going to do? Well, firstly, we're just going to pattern match on the declaration because we don't care about the head of the declaration. We just care about the sub goals. And what we're going to do is first we're going to check if any of the names in in this are unused. So are there any underscores? Um, if there aren't, then we're just going to return the list of experts unmodified. But if there are unused names, we're going to do something using this go function. Uh, and you know, this this code here flip zip blah 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 it seems a little complicated but really all you have to know about it is that it's just doing what is necessary to run this go function uh, and if you look at the type of go it should be fairly obvious what uh what this is overall doing so what we're what go does is it takes a single relation rather than a uh, a list of expert and uh, it does a writer t action that returns a new relation. So it's essentially, we're just operating on each sub goal. Uh, and this flip zip thing is just to reconstruct all the negations. Uh, anyway, so on each relation, what are we going to do? Uh, well, first, we're going to check if there are any unused uh, variables. And if there aren't, uh, if you know if all of the variables are not unused, then we're just going to return it unmodified. Otherwise, what we're going to do is uh, we are going to find the indices of all the variables that are that are actually used, right? So. Um, you know, if I had something like x underscore underscore y, then this is going to return 0 and uh, 1. So it's not going to include 1. It's not going to include 2. It will include 3. So 0 and 3, right? So uh, that's what positions is. Uh, and then we're going to synthesize a fresh uh, relation name. So if you recall how I wrote this bar prime here, well, in a lot of cases, we just kind of need to magic a name of a relation out of thin air. And that's what this fresh rel does. 
Um, <coughs> and fresh rel is coming from this monad tack constraint. Uh, and then finally, we are going to create an assignment, uh, and that exactly corresponds to this bar prime assignment. Uh, the left hand side is going to be this fresh rel that we made, and the right hand side is going to be a project operation. Uh, and then, uh, so we're going to emit that that statement, uh, and then we're going to return, and, and by emit, I mean we're going to write it into the writer T. If you're not too familiar with Haskell, this writer T is kind of like a logger. Um, so we're, we're essentially logging a list of uh, statements. Uh, and, but, you know, a, an action that does logging can also return a value. Uh, and it's returning this relation. So what is the relation? Well, it's the fresh rel. Uh, so that corresponds to this bar prime here. Uh, and, well, we had x, we have x here, but we had x comma underscore. So what we actually need to do is remove all of the unused elements. Uh, and so that's what this filter is doing. <clears throat> okay. So that's uh, step number one done. Step number two. Uh, so for each sub goal with a constant, so an example of that would be foo of x, y, you know, bar of foo bar. I'm actually going to call that, uh, I'm going to say that. Um, so if you have something like this, then what we want to do is we want to get rid of these constants. Okay, cool. Uh, so we've got, uh, okay, yeah. So for each sub goal with a constant, well, let's say we have this like foo of x, y, uh, and bar of m, n, x, y. So what we're going to do is we're first going to select uh, to restrict the first two elements of bar. So we're going to do like, we're going to create a, a new name called bar prime. Uh, and we're going to define bar prime to be select of zero, because we want to restrict this m, uh, and we want to restrict it to b m. And then uh, the relation that we're going to use as an input is bar. Uh, and then we're going to create bar prime prime, and we're going to select one, and it's going to be n, and uh, it's going to be bar prime. And then uh, we want to get rid of these two elements, because we already know exactly what they are. They're, they're not useful anymore. So we're going to have bar prime 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 is going to be project of, uh, so we want to get rid of 0 and 1, so we want just 2 and 3 here. And uh, the input relation is going to be bar prime prime. And then the uh, actual the actual uh, rule is going to look like bar prime 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 of x comma y. So we have now eliminated uh, all uses of constants on the right hand side, uh, and that's what this select constants function is doing. Um, so this, uh, if you notice. Here we have this flip zip map second sub goals blah 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 thing that reconstructs uh, the structure, uh, and we've got the same thing going on here. Um, and so again, our go function is just takes a relation and it returns a writer t. Uh, sorry, I lost my position. Let me actually increase the size of this. Um, so it's going to take a relation, and it's going to uh, return a relation, and it's going to emit some statements on the side. And so what we're going to do is, if so, uh, this if you recall, the args is a list of either constant uh, name. So uh, if 
all of the args are right, uh, and what right means here is that it means it's a name and not a constant, then uh, we're just going to return the relation that we were given. Uh, so what this means is, you know, if we have something like something like this, well, then there's no constants here, so this pass should just shouldn't do anything. Uh, but in all other cases, we should we're going to do the following. Well, what are we going to do? First, we're going to uh, create a list of all the constants in the argument list, and we're going to pair it with their index into the argument list. That's what this int is. Got to drink some water. And then we are going to run fresh rel as many times as there are elements of that list. So that's what this replicate m does. It does fresh rel n times, where n is equal to the length of constants. And it returns all of the outputs of fresh rel as a list called rels. And then we are going to synthesize a bunch of these selects. Uh, so if you recall, we have these two selects here because we had two constants in the original input, uh, but we might have five constants and then we need five selects. And the way that we do this is a little bit involved. Uh, so one thing to notice is how we have this structure where each line uses like bar and bar prime, bar prime and bar prime prime bar uh well this is not this is not an example but uh you know we we kind of want to you know if there were three things that would be bar prime 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 and bar prime prime bar prime 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 bar prime 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 uh so we want to kind of iterate over uh all of the rels in such a way that we we don't just have access to the current rel, but we also have access to the previous rel. Uh, and so let me just quickly go through what this means. We're going to take rel, which is this thing, um, which in our analogy is bar here, and we are going to prepend it to this list. And what is this list? Well, it's init rels. Uh, what init does is it takes a list that's like one, two, three, four and it turns it into one, two, three. So it just removes the last element. So uh, in, in our case, what that's gonna look like is bar, bar prime, bar prime prime. Yeah, uh, or sorry, it's not gonna include bar prime prime uh, because we, we only have two, two things that we're doing here. Uh, and then rels, is going to, of course, be bar prime and bar prime prime. And we're going to zip these together. So that means that at any given moment of the zip, we're going to have access to bar and bar prime, or bar prime and bar prime prime. Uh, and we're also going to have access to each of the elements of constants. So we're going to have access to this int, uh, which is the index into args that the constant is and we're going to have access to the constant itself. And if you think about it, that should be exactly what we need to synthesize one of these select lines. Um, so we have the prev rel, which is, you know, like bar. Uh, we have the new rel, which is bar prime. We have the adder, which is zero or one. Uh, and we have the constant, which is like m or n. Uh, and we just create an assignment with a select. Uh, we just create an assignment with a select uh, that assigns to new rel with select of prev rel. And then we, uh, now that we've created that list of statements, we are going to emit it into the writer t, and that's what this tell function does. And then we're going to create another fresh rel, uh, and that corresponds to this like bar prime 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 here. 
And uh, then we're going to tell another assignment. Uh, and it's going to assign to project rel with uh, project of. And then we're going to find all the indices where uh, where args has a right rather than a left, i.e. Uh, what this is essentially going to do is it's going to filter out all the uh, all, all the constants from args, uh, and we are going to the the reason that we're doing last rels here is that we want to use the very last thing in this chain of assignments. Uh, so this that's what this bar prime prime is. And then uh, finally, we are going to uh, filter out all of the constants from this uh, relation. So we're going to get bar prime 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 of x, y. Uh, and that's what this line does. I hope that made some amount of sense. Uh, let me just check if I changed anything by accident. Uh, looks like I did. And uh, now let's move on to number three. And this is where things are going to get really complicated. Uh, <laughs> if those ones were an issue, then uh, you might not want to stick around for this. Uh, <laughs> so what we want to do is we want to join. So like, let's say we have an example that's like, you know, foo of x, uh, z, and uh, you know, bar of x, y, baz of y, z, something like that. Well, we've got this y that's repeated between bar and baz. And as we discussed before in uh, relational algebra, that's going to essentially be a natural join. Um, and uh, the symbol for a natural join is this uh, bow tie thing. Um, so I'm going to use that. Oops, bow tie. Yeah. So uh, we're going to want to do something like, you know, uh, foo prime, or, you know, t1 is bar joined with baz. Uh, and then we're going to rewrite this right hand side. I'm just going to copy this over here so we still have it to reference. Uh, we're going to replace this right hand side so that's like t1 of you know x comma y comma z uh, and that that's pretty straightforward uh, but what if we have multiple things that we need to join on uh, and when we join we have to say that we're joining on exactly one thing in this case uh, so let me let me actually address that first so yeah we have to there's two two aspects of this. Firstly, we have to know how many things we're joining on between these two. So in this case, it's just one. So we're gonna have this. Uh, oops. We're gonna have this bow tie sub one, and that corresponds to in our uh, rel algebra type that corresponds to this natural here. Uh, and then we. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm spacing out. Oh, yeah. So what if we have something like this, though? So then it's y comma x, y comma z. And if we just did this, well, then we'd be joining x with y, which we don't want to do. Uh, I mean, x and y might not even have the same type. Uh, so uh, because because you want to do the first n with uh, the last n. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you'd clarify when, that. Yeah, when we when we join here, we're joining the last n variables of bar with the first n variables of baz. Um, I, I mentioned that before, but I'm not sure if people remember. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this t2, and uh, we're going to rename. Uh, and the permutation that we're going to use in this case is 1, 0. Uh, and it's going to be bar. And then we're going to do t1 joined with baz. So uh, 
the first thing is we have to rename these so they're in the right order, uh, and then we're going to have to join them, and uh, and then we have to emit the thing with the new relation, and you know we we want to uh, have this thing. We we want to like still. I mean, like this corresponds to the fact that like we have name emp emp id depth name here, and we have depth name manager here. Uh, and if you notice, we kind of like smush it together, so we have name emp id depth name manager. Um, <coughs> okay. Uh, what is next? Ah, right. So, what if we have a situation like this? Uh, so we're going to have uh, a of x, y, or let's say x, y, z. Actually, I, had a, I have a, an example written in my notebook that I'm going to use for the sake of simplicity. Uh, So let's say this is x, y, z, w, and we have um, bar of x, comma, y. Uh, wait. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, and then we have baz of, or sorry, bar. Wait, yeah, I, I already did baz. Uh, we have baz of y, comma, z, and then we have box of z comma w uh, and actually I want to modify that a little bit so I want to add y to I want to add y to quax so imagine that it's like this so it's clear that we have to do a join between bar and baz here uh, and it's also clear that we have to do a join between baz and quax but if you notice, bar also shares a variable with quux. So we could do a join between quux and bar. So we get this kind of weird question of what order are we going to do the joins in? Um, and I have an answer to that question. It's maybe not a perfect answer, but it is an answer. Uh, so the algorithm looks like this. First, we are going to create a map from um, yeah. In the elaboration module, there's like a long comment I wrote that is exactly the algorithm. Just if you want to reference that while you're yeah. talking about it, that is a good point. Um, oh, I deleted that comment. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> I uh, I deleted it because some of it was like no longer entirely correct uh it's okay. in the git history That's... okay <laughs> uh whoops <laughs> okay so first we're going to create a map from uh variable name to uh uh to the relation in which it appears so w appears in baz x oh sorry i i actually need to i can't copy from my notebook because i use different names so w appears in quax x appears in bar y appears in bar baz and quax and z i'm going to move w down here because it makes more sense uh, Z appears in Baz and Quax. And uh, I'm going to take a momentary break. Uh, yeah, so we are, uh, what are we doing? Oh, yeah, yeah. So we're trying to deal with the situation where we've got, you know, things where it's not clear what order to join them in. 
And what we want to do, uh, I've got some background noise that I want to eliminate. So we want to generate this map from variables to the relation in which they are used. Uh, the set of relations in which they are used. And then we kind of want to uh, We, we want to take each of these sets and we want to turn them into the set of uh, different pairs that can be generated. So what I mean is this. Uh, so a pair of, we, we, let's say we have like bar. So what that would become is like bar comma bar. Right, but bar comma bar has the same thing twice, so we ignore it, and so this is just the empty list. If we have y, well, we've got bar, baz, and quux, uh, and so the ways that we can make pairs from that are bar comma baz, or sorry, bar comma baz, uh, baz comma quux, uh, and bar comma quux. And uh, we don't care about the order in these pairs, unlike in Haskell. Uh, so you can consider these to be like sorted pairs. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we ignore the possibility of making like bar comma bar, because we, we ignore those. And then uh, in this case, the only sorted pair we can make is baz comma quux. And then in this case, it's the empty list. So now that we have this thing, we are going to uh, invert this map. Uh, and what I mean by that is we are going to turn it into a map from the, the pairs to the variables in which they appear uh, in, in that map. So we're going to take bar baz, and that only appears in y. Uh, we're going to take baz quux, and that only appears in uh, y and z. We're going to take uh, bar quux, and that only appears in y, and we're done, right? And then uh, we're going to choose the one that has the most elements on this right-hand side. So in this case, it's baz comma quux. Uh, and these elements, uh, so what, so we we chose this. Uh, and what does that mean? Well, it means that we're going to join baz and quux. Uh, it kind of means that like it is the best idea at the current point in time to merge baz and quux uh, because it will merge the most variables. And... Uh, the variables that we're going to merge are y and z. So then we take baz and uh, define something like baz prime that is going to be rename of, you know, something uh, baz. And what this something is going to do is it's going to make it so that y and z are at the end of the list of variables. Uh, and then likewise, we're going to do quux prime, and we're going to rename. And we're going to make it so that y and z are at the beginning of the list of variables. And then finally, we're going to, uh, you know, we're, we're going to like do t1 is uh, baz prime joined with... Uh, joined with two on two elements with uh, quux prime. Uh, and then the rule that we emit is going to be, uh, so let me get what the rule originally was. Uh, so uh, the rule originally was this, but we we joined baz prime and quux prime, or sorry, baz and quux. So we are going to change it to be uh, T1 of 
y, z, w. Um, and, uh, and now you might say, well, we still have to deal with this join of the y's here. Uh, but we're, what we're going to do is we're going to recursively call this function. So uh, we're, we're just going to do that whole process over again uh, on this list of subgoals. Eventually, we'll get rid of all the joins. Uh, and that is what join subgoals does. I'm going to pause to give my voice a break. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Looks like no one has any questions. <sighs> Okay, <coughs> so now I'm going to explain uh, the actual implementation of join subgoals. <coughs> so what join subgoals does uh, is first we check if any of the subgoals need a join. Uh, because if none of the subgoals need a join, then we should just return the subgoals unchanged. Uh, and when I say need a join, what I mean is two subgoals have overlapping variable sets. Uh, okay, and then the actual body of join subgoals, what is it going to do? Well, it's going to be pretty goddamn complicated admittedly. Uh, so if you recall, we have this rename thing, and it has this weird permutation in it. And the permutation is meant to get y and z to the end of uh, to the end of this list and to the beginning of this list. So essentially, that's what permutation LHS and permutation RHS are doing. They're synthesizing that permutation. And um, if you remember, uh, so in my example, first we had this map from x to bar, blah, blah, blah. So that corresponds to this variable used in map. And then uh, we have this map from variable to list of pairs. And that's what this, uh, well, I was going to say that's what this join pairs thing is, but it seems like we never actually materialize this map. We go straight to this one. Uh, so yeah, this third map is what join pairs is. Um, and uh, join vars is a set var, and that's basically this y comma z here. LHS and RHS are baz and quarks. Uh, so actually, it turns out that instead of having baz and quarks here, what you really want is like the position in the list of subgoals that contains baz and quarks. Because like, what if you had something that's like, you know, foo of dot dot dot, uh, and then bar of dot dot dot, comma, bar of dot dot dot. Well, just saying bar doesn't uniquely tell you which one of these two things you're going to do the join on. Um, so you need it, you know, you need an index into this list. Yeah, so the last thing you said was we need some way to index into that list. Um, you mean the, I, I was explaining why instead of saying like, in, instead of having like baz comma quux here, we need to have an index into the list of subgoals because you might have the yeah. same subgoal twice, or you might have the same relation twice in the subgoals. <clears throat> okay, so at its core, what join subgoals does is first it does a rename, which corresponds to this baz prime equals rename, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then it does another rename for the right hand side, so that's this quux prime. And then it does the join, which uh, is this T1 equals Baz prime joined with Quox prime. 
uh, and this 2 is this join size here. Uh, and then finally, we have this, um, we return a, we, so we take this, the sub goals list, and we delete uh, Baz and Quox from it. Uh, that's what this delete at is doing. It deletes an element at a certain index in a list. And then we prepend onto it the joined relation. Uh, so that's what this T1 would be. Um, and uh, we have joined params as the parameters for it. Uh, and we assume that it's not negated because at this point, so this list of passes has some like omissions in it. And one of the omissions is you need to get rid of all the negations. <sighs> okay. Tell you, it's surprisingly hard on your uh, lungs to talk for an hour and a half. Uh, Okay, so once we're in this in this situation, uh, so let me let me take this thing and modify it. So now we have you know uh, I don't know foobar of x or not of x of Okay, let me make a new example. Uh, so let's say we have foo of x comma y, and we have um, bar of x and bar of y or, and baz of y. So uh, I'm gonna put this on its own thing. So in this case, when we run join sub goals it won't do anything because there's no joining happening here, right? There's no, you know, this this would be a join, but this isn't doing a join. Uh, but what we actually, we do actually end up wanting to do a join. We just don't want to use the same logic that we used here uh, for join sub goals. So after join sub goals runs, we want to run this function called join everything else. And what join everything else does is, uh, so I guess uh, one little primer piece of information that will help is, what does it mean if I join join two things with zero as the number here? Uh, what it means is we're going to essentially treat the columns as being completely separate. Uh, and what that essentially results in is a Cartesian product of bar and baz. So that's exactly what we want. Like, if you think about it, what is foo? Well, it's the Cartesian of bar and baz, Cartesian product of bar and baz. So, um, Where was I going with this? Oh yeah, so what we want to do is we want to join with size zero everything in the list after we do join sub goals. And that's exactly what join everything else does. Uh, we just take the first two expressions in the list and we uh, get the relations out of them. And then we synthesize a fresh relation uh, and we join rel A and rel B with size zero. Uh, and define joint to be that, and emit that assignment. Uh, and then we recursively run join everything else on a rule where the first two elements of the list have been joined, uh, and that's const on to rest. So uh, eventually this will terminate with just one, uh, like a after this phase runs, everything has exactly one thing on its right hand side. And uh, I gotta take a break again. I gotta use the bathroom.
And I'm back. No questions. Cool. Uh, yeah, so that's what join everything else does. It recursively joins everything. Uh, so now all of our rules have one thing on the right hand side, or one or zero things on the right hand side. Uh, okay, and that's. So we've done one, two, and three, uh, and also this join everything else, which kind of isn't in the list. Um, uh, and four, five, and six are kind of not quite implemented yet. Um, so yeah, I think I think I'll just explain one last, a couple of last things, and then. Uh, We'll call it a night, uh, and hopefully I can edit this stream so that it will be uh, watchable on YouTube, and anyone who wants to watch future streams can catch up on the architecture of this, uh, you know, get, a, get a good introduction to what we're doing. Uh, so I've been going through these... Uh, things in this section called 4.2.3 intermediate representation. But there's some other uh, things that we need to do before we get there. Um, <coughs> yeah, so that's what this is. If a variable appears multiple times in a single subgoal, we give each additional use a distinct name, and then add extra equality subgoals to make the new variables equal to the original variable. So, uh, the example they give is, you know, foo of x, x, x. We want to turn that into foo of x, x prime, x prime prime. And in fact, actually, what we're going to end up doing is x prime, x prime prime, x prime prime prime. Uh, and then we're going to add some constraints that are like, uh, so when I write x equals, you might be thrown off because equals kind of isn't in our syntax at all. Uh, and what I'm really going to mean by that is we're going to have some special magic relation that's called equals. Uh, and it takes two things. Uh, So we want to turn this into this. Uh, and the property that this has is that we never use the same variable twice in one uh, in one use of uh, in one sub goal. And the way we do that is honestly quite involved. Uh, so we take the list of experts, and we're going to return a new list of experts, and we're going to recurse over it. So uh, first, we're just going to isolate the first sub-goal in that list. Uh, and what are we going to do with that sub-goal? Uh, well... We're going to do a whole bunch of stuff, but ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to create sub goal prime, which is kind of like a modified version of that sub goal. And we're going to also create equalities, which is a list of a whole bunch of equalities. Um, and we're going to prepend sub goal prime and equalities onto the result of calling, uh, of recursively calling on sub goals. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. And so what what are equalities and, and subgoal prime? Well, equalities is relatively straightforward. Uh, if you look here, it's like basically this. So we're going to have, we're going to first generate a list of names. So 
that list of names is going to be like X prime, X prime, prime, X prime, prime, prime. Uh, and the way we're going to create those names is we're going to, we're actually going to create a map. So this names thing is going to have type map from name to list of name. And what we're going to do is let's say we have a variable up, pre up here. Th so let's say we have something like this. So X appears three times, Y appears two times, and Z appears one time. Well, what we want is we want a map that looks like X goes to three, Y goes to two, Z goes to one. Uh, and then we, and this is the sound of me discovering a bug. Uh, I think we actually want to explicitly filter out this like Z maps to one case because we shouldn't do anything in that case. Um, yeah, I think, I think what that means is that we end up compiling like if we have something like x comma y, we end up compiling that to uh, foo of x prime y prime equals of x x prime equals of y y prime, which is kind of pointless. Um, so let's just on the fly fix that issue. Uh, I think what we have to do is this. So we're going to turn that into a list. Uh, and ask just means ascending list. Uh, I guess we don't really care about the order, so I'll just say to list. And then we're going to filter. Uh, and what we want is that the second is greater than one second element of each tuple. Uh, and then we're just going to do map that from list again. Uh, and the reason we have to use from list with here rather than from list is because at this point, we'll never have the same key twice. Uh, but at this point, we will definitely have the same key twice because of the way that we're constructing this map. Um, and what from list with does is if it sees the same key twice, then it adds together the values. Um, so essentially what we're giving from list with is something that looks like x1, 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 and it's turning it into a map that looks like x maps to 3. Hopefully that made sense. Um, okay. Uh, I think they're following along. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, and then what is this eqrel? Well, it's a uh, it's a part of Monad TAC, uh, and what this is, is basically it's me being lazy and not wanting to add something to our relation data type. So I'm just saying, I don't really care. There's just some magic way that I can get a, uh, a relation that represents equality. Uh, and I can do it in the monad. Um, then it might come in handy that it's in the monad later. Uh, I'm not sure. So then we have this make equality function. What we're doing is we're getting the equality relation, and then we're producing a relation, uh, and it takes two variables that are x and y, and it's not negated. Uh, so this this overall thing is an expression, an expert, I mean. Uh, 
and then we take names and we turn it into a list. Uh, and then we do this concat map sequence A, which is a dirty trick, admittedly. So if you recall, map uh, names has type map name list of name. And when we do to list, we're turning that into name comma or list of name comma list of name. So that type. Uh, if you do map sequence A over that. Well, what does sequence A do? Sequence A takes two, uh, it, it kind of takes the top two type constructors and flips them. So if I ran sequence A on this, uh, which wouldn't actually be possible because of the constraints of sequence A, um, I would get something that looks like this. Uh, if I run map sequence A, then what I'm going to get is this. And if I run concat map, well, then I'm going to concat it, which is an operation that takes a list of lists and turns it into just a list. Uh, and so it's going to look like that list of name, comma, name. And uh, so I'm going to make an equality for each one of those. And that's what equalities is going to be. Okay, uh, and then sub goal prime is made in honestly kind of a complicated way. So we have this thing. Okay, so we start with sub goal, and what we're going to do is we're going to run this modify names function over something. Uh, what you can ignore this, but what it basically is is it's magic that allows me to dig into an expert rel name and get every point in that data structure that has a name in it and list it out as a list. And then I can run any function I want on that list uh, to modify it, as long as that function keeps the length of the list the same. Uh, and then the new values in that list will be substituted back into the expression. Uh, and if you're curious about how that works, it's using a thing called uh, control.lens.plated, uh, or it's related, strongly related to a thing called scrap your boilerplate or uniplate. Um, it's a very powerful technique that sometimes comes in handy. So then we have this modify names function that takes a list of names and promises to return another list of name of the same length. And what it's going to do is for each element, it's going to run this modify name function, which is stateful. Uh, and the state that it carries is a map from name to int. And that map starts as, as empty. Now, what does modify name do? Well, first, it checks if the name that we received uh, does not appear in all of ours. Huh. I don't understand why we did that anymore. Did you change the definition? I don't remember it being... Uh, I changed it slightly. Uh, let me look at the kit log I I remember there there used to be like let equals something and then this was that Yeah, look at the um look at the git history of this file
Yes, yeah, so that was num usages. But I don't understand how num usages could be zero. I think maybe this needs to be one. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think it needs to be one there. I think zero doesn't really make sense. Because uh, zero just mean like zero should just never happen. That's the whole point of all of ours. Yeah. Okay, so then we get the current state and we look up the name that we are getting as an input in names. Uh, so that gives us a list of names that we're going to call ends. Uh, and then we're going to go, we're going to modify the current state so that it, uh, so that now, you know, it's a map from name to int. Uh, so we're going to alter it so that that this name has its int increased by one. Uh, and uh, then we're going to return the result of looking up the, uh, so we take, I'm thinking, I think what we do is we take this int and we look up the thing with that index in ends and we return that as the new name, which I think makes sense. Cause like, what is ends? Well, it looks like, it looks like this. Foo prime, foo prime, prime, foo prime, 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 right? Where like n equals foo. So yeah. Uh that's what that's what remove subgoal duplication does. Uh and then there's a couple small other passes that are fairly simple and that I can explain at a later date if necessary um or you can read them yourself uh but yeah that's that's the bulk of what's been implemented um and uh i'm excited to see where this project goes from here um in the future uh it will probably be chessi writing code and me pair programming with chessi um because that's how we've developed most of this so far uh, but, uh, I just wanted to do this introductory run through of the code to explain, you know, what most of it does. And, uh, any last questions? Yeah. So now if there are any more questions, I can answer them and then uh, on the stream and uh, probably edit this and put it on YouTube. Yeah, and we uh, we work on this at least a few nights a week. Um, so from now on, I'm anticipating maybe we'll stream about, you know, that much. Assuming we stream every time we uh, write code for this, so. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I would hope that I wouldn't, because if we, if we develop without streaming, then we have to do another stream to explain what it is that we developed. Uh, yeah. Um, well, it's not looking like we have any questions, so. Just an infinite expanse of Twitch streams. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, uh. I'm uh, glad to have streamed to you guys, and uh, I'll see you later.